Well, on now to our big debate. Team Indus, the Indian startup that aimed to put an Indian-built rover on the surface of the moon in competing for the International Google X Award. In the end, the deadlines proved to be impossible to achieve for this group, and Team Indus had to tell Google that they wouldn't make the deadline. To many, this had a lot to do with raising funds. Was Team Indus just too ambitious? Realistically, could they have achieved so much? Well, the founder of Team Indus, Rahul Narayan, and the chief technology officer, Dr. Vivek Raghavan, join us, along with our science editor, Pallav Bhagda. I'd like to thank all of you very much for finally deciding uh, to speak on this issue and telling us a little bit about your plans and what went wrong. Uh, Rahul, let me come to you first. Was it ultimately the money that you couldn't raise? Was it all about that? Yeah. Thanks, Vishnu. Thanks for having us on the show and give us an, giving us an opportunity to talk about uh, uh, how the last few months at Team Indus have, has been. Uh, for us, um, a lot of things were challenges. Uh, it, it, it's almost seven years since we started. Uh, at that time, it was an impossible dream. Uh, we put together a team, we found the support, we built the technology, and we brought it to a point wherein we were very, very close to making it happen. Uh, I wouldn't say that there was any one specific reason, but what I would say is that fundraising was amongst the biggest challenges that we had. So, there were how, other challenges that so we what were was your shortfall? What were you looking to raise and how much did you ultimately manage to raise and by when did you have to raise the, the full amount of money? So quite like any other program, there is a full program outlay, which was you know between 60 to 65 million dollars that we were looking to raise to complete the program. And this was needed in phases as we went along. The first couple of years were relatively slow for us because we were building, uh, you know, we were designing stuff. As we started building things out, as we started getting, uh, uh, you know, uh, importing equipment and getting the launch plans on, online, that's when it started getting expensive for us. So to my mind, again, it's an opinion, and we could you know, have, have different ways of looking at it. To my mind, our, our highest point was October of 2017. Uh, that's when we were ready for the judges to come in. They came in, spent a full week with us, and had a few things gone our way around that time, we could have potentially met this target. So what but come December, we realized that there were there are a few things. There are a few things that we could have paralyzed. There were a few things that we could have done differently uh, and, and potentially raised a little bit more money a little earlier in the game. And, and that could have, could have had an impact on the scheduling of the program itself. Dr. Vivek Raghavan, what are some of the technologies which, which Team Indus still has, uh, which you could potentially use in the future? Uh, so, uh, uh, thanks for having me on the program, and uh, and I think the I'm I'm getting some feedback here. Uh, yeah, okay. we, we'll try and fix that. Go so, ahead. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So the, uh, the the I mean the, the fundamental technology is you know we we've developed technologies in three or four different areas. First, you know uh, you know from a structural perspective, uh, we built a spacecraft. That uh, that you know that that can basically survive both the launch loads as well as the loads uh, associated with the landing of a spacecraft on the moon, and uh, this is something that you know from a structural perspective, and uh, we also qualified the entire propulsion system, and uh, we uh, and we actually uh, those and those we were very confident regarding about the spacecraft. The second area is the area of you know of of, of is the area of avionics, and 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 software. So, and I think we we designed pretty much the entire hardware and software in the system. We done a very, very large number of extensive Monte Carlo simulations, which uh, which actually uh, you know uh, caused us to have a, a high degree of confidence that that we could land uh, or successfully on the moon. Uh, you know within a very uh, uh, you know. Uh, with, with a great deal of accuracy, and obviously this is something which is a very uh, you know a significant technology that 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 uh, that can be used by by Team Indus moving forward, and then we'd also you know gone into the the, the whole mission planning, and 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 we we're actually in in a mode where we were doing regular mission rehearsals and things like that. So I would say of all the teams competing in the GLXP, 
we are probably the ones who are most likely to be able to meet this deadline. But okay. I think, you know, I think, uh, uh, f f you know, from a technology perspective, I think we were ready. And, 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 and you know, uh, and, and Rahul is being a little diplomatic, I think funding was, you know, uh, is one of the key reasons why, you know, we couldn't go forward. Uh, okay. go, go forward. Uh, forward All right, fair enough. Pallav, uh, with, you've, uh, you've uh, seen meeting this the program mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, over the last several yeah. years, you've uh, seen, uh, you know, the only parallel that exists in India is, of course, ISRO, that's a government entity. Um, but, you know, what do your friends or your sources in ISRO actually tell you about how they assessed the capabilities? Because what Team Indus was trying to do was, was huge uh, and the technology obstacles uh, was significant, always. Well, let me start off by saying that I feel very bad that uh, Rahul and his team have dropped out of uh, this prize. I think they made a fair chance and, and went far ahead into the game and were close, not very close, still close enough to try and get the prize. Uh, but there were many challenges for them. And uh, to me, personally, uh, middle of 2017, it was quite clear uh, they were out of the game. Uh, once they had defaulted on their installment on payments to ISRO, it was quite clear they were running out of funds and they didn't have the money to pay for the polar satellite launch vehicle. Uh, I do not know how the judges decided on that their capability and technology was good enough. Uh, Many people uh, had always had doubts on the flight uh, models which they did not seem to have. And they were far away from creating a ready flight model which could fly end of December for uh, rendezvousing with the moon. In fact, I feel very bad for the very instant that it's, it is called Ek Choti Si Asha. Or yeah. Ek Choti Si Asha Mere Liye Bhi in fact, if all had gone to plan, tomorrow Vishnu, you and me would be celebrating this Republic Day where India's flag would have reached on the moon through Team Indus. Yeah. But somewhere along the line, on the technology side, on the techno-commercial side and on funding, on all of them, I think somewhere Team Indus faltered. Yeah. But I think there are learnings and there are other startups which are going to learn from this and go ahead. There are 20 startups in India, two of them were very promising and Team Indus itself can rise and do a lot more from this learning. Yeah. Rahul, uh, you know, I mean, along the road, we've, we heard stories of how you were losing uh, very bright young men and women. Uh, you know, who you had started working with you, was there a sense that they were no longer interested in the moon mission, that they felt it was unrealistic, uh, or did they choose other avenues which they felt was better? Because, you know, many years back, this was an incredible team that you managed to get together of young, enthusiastic dreamers. Uh, and, and somehow, you know, I mean, did, did that all disappear as, as hope disappeared? Uh, well, um, on, on the team, I, I, I totally agree that we, we have we have a rock star team uh, and it's been a long journey. Uh, some of our team members have now been with us for five, five and a half years and in today's day and age, I'm sure you, you, you also deal with uh, bright young youngsters who have medium term, long term plans. Uh, we based out of Bangalore and uh, whether or not that's the case in other cities, but in the, the case in Bangalore is everybody does want to go out and do their own startup. So I, I won't blame uh, uh, any, any specific person for having left uh, us if their, if their medium term plans did not align with what we were trying to do. Uh, I'd be the first one to confess and, and say that uh, when we started off, we did not understand the true magnitude and, and uh, you know, what, what was involved. There were several known unknowns and there were obviously several unknown unknowns uh, in the program itself. Uh, so yes, as, as, as we pushed the deadline out, that caused more frustrations for some than others and some of them have decided to move out. Having said that, we still continue to yep. be a 100 plus team 
and uh, we retain the core of our engineering team which continues to build and work on the spacecraft. So tell us a little bit more, uh, Vivek, on, on what it is that you're now going to be building and how is that project going to be financially viable? Because at the end of the day, that's what it boils down to, right? You've had a lot of very well-known faces, uh, very wealthy individuals, uh, some of our real stars in India coming forward and, and, and you know giving you funds and you've relied to a great extent on that. Uh, but uh, where do you see yourself having a, a, a viable model which generates revenues for you and how soon will that happen? What exactly are you building now which can result in that? Uh, so I'll, I'll take the uh, you know, question in two parts. Yeah. I think, uh, first of all, I think I, I do want to thank uh, you know, uh, our investors and without whom uh, and we've raised actually a very significant amount of money, though it was not quite enough for uh, completing the mission. Uh, and I think that's something that we, we, we really do thank our investors who, who, who believed in us. And, uh, and I think uh, part of the, the excitement, and I think when people uh, came together in this team, the goal was, you know, how do we take, you know, India to the moon? And that was, that was, that was how, as part of GLXP. But I think where we, you know, now, uh, you know, that now that the, the deadline of the GLXP will pass without our, our doing that, we believe that we still have all the fundamental pieces to actually be a company which can do, uh, which can basically uh, uh, do exploration beyond the, beyond the orbit of the Earth. And, and I think that we will go to the moon. And I think that, but, but we'll have to figure out uh, ways uh, to, to fund this mission in a commercially viable way. And I think that, you know, we have to look at it, uh, I mean, because this has always been a global play, uh, this is something that we'll have to look at it internationally and we'll have to look at, uh, you know, how to configure the spacecraft so that it can be, it can be commercially viable. And I think that's the challenge uh, so, that we have. But we believe that, uh, no, you know, Vivek, the technology I want to interrupt have because what you're is, saying is, is important. What yes. you're saying is important. You mm. still want to get to the moon mm. with a rover and generate data, I assume, f uh, through which we can harness knowledge, obviously, and you would be able to harness uh, revenues as well to make your, your startup financially viable. So that's your goal. Get to the moon and then sell information or data, I presume, which would be useful. Is that what you want to do? Uh, I mean, data products can be part of it, but actually it might actually be taking uh, experiments to the moon or taking, uh, you know, uh, 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 taking payloads to the moon. So therefore, it, it, it may not be just data, it actually carrying things to the moon would be, uh, you know, our focus. Now, our particular, you know, right now in the current spacecraft, we had, you know, the capability of taking about 20 kilograms of, of, uh, of payload, which yeah. included our rover and, and some other payloads. And I think if we, if we look at how to do it commercially, We'll probably be looking at, at 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 a larger amount of payload which need to be taken uh, for the for the entire mission to be commercially viable. But yeah. certainly, data and uh, and uh, it, it could also be part of it. Sure. But I think the primary thing would be how do we how do we take larger amounts of payload to the moon? Well, uh, we wish you uh, all the very best uh, because you know I mean it's Team Indus has been to a lot of us a real winner in terms of your dreams, in terms of your ideals, in terms of your ability to bring young people together. And I think there's a great future ahead for, for Indian companies, startups, perhaps not startups, in exploring an area which nobody really has. And you've got the inspiration of Indians who have succeeded in that. ISRO is a great place. You've had a lot of help uh, from ISRO, uh, from some of their scientists and engineers in the past. Uh, I'd like to thank all of you very much for joining us and we look forward to the next Team Indus meet, uh, meeting next Team Indus adventure. Goodbye.